Okay. Um, hi, I'm Ella. I'm a sophomore at MSUM. Um, yeah. <laughs> I did my second critique on The Social Dilemma, which is a documentary about the dangers of social media and how it harms your social or your mental health and just everything bad about social media, I guess. <laughs> and then my second paper was on Bailey Parnell's TED Talk. She's a CEO of Skills Camp, which I stated in my paper. Very known, very widely known businesswoman, very successful. And she just talks about how social media damages our mental health. She talks about her personal experience with mental, with social media and all that jazz. <laughs> Um, so in my first paper, The Social Dilemma by Jeff Orlowski, the documentary was so breathtaking and I recommend it to anyone and everyone. I actually, after I watched it, I, text, I texted every single one of my friends. I was like, uh, you need to watch this. It's very interesting, very intriguing. I mean, I do recommend it to anyone. I myself have taken my phone and put it away because I don't like the fact that I'm always on my phone. I'm always needing to check my phone. I'm always needing to see if someone texted me all this validation that I need from other people, which I don't need, but I think I need because social media makes me think I need it, you know? <laughs> um, but my second paper is on Bailey Parnell's TED Talk, Is Social Media Hurting Your Mental Health? Um, I've never heard of Bailey Parnell before researching this TED Talk, um, but from looking at her biography and stuff, she's very, very widely known. As I said, she's the CEO and founder of Skills Camp, which is just like a, like a camp for well, well, or making your skills for business better, how to run a business, etc. Um, I decided to take a risk and include her speech from 2017. I know that is not in the time span of the years that we were supposed to do. So I'm sorry about that. If I get points off, I will take that. <laughs> um, but I, I could have looked harder for a more recent, recent, recent one, but hers stood out to me because she herself stated that she falls victimized to all these social media tricks and turns and all this stuff. Like she, for example, her camping trip, she stated that she was always checking her phone, wanting to take a picture of the mountains, all that stuff. And it took her four days to finally disconnect from her phone. And I think that's insane how phones and social media and texting, they have this strain on us where we think we need to check them. We think we can't live without them. We think we can't live without social media. And I think that's insane, honestly. <laughs> Um, well, she isn't a millennial currently, but she has insights. She has the insights of one. She knows a lot about social media and marketing and all that stuff. So, yeah. Okay, so one of the questions I get asked most often about safe social and how we can practice it is who's responsible for this? Who is responsible for regulating it? And my response to that is it's like every other risky behavior like alcohol or cannabis, it's a multi-pronged approach. There's no one institution that's solely responsible. Can the government do more? Yeah, absolutely. There could be more public service announcements. There could be more regulation. There could be more regulation on the social media companies, definitely. And that's number two. The companies themselves could have more social responsibility. We call this corporate social responsibility and we expect it from other distributors of other risky behaviors. If you're going to give this drug to the masses, you need to do something about the impacts it has. The third institution, education. I am putting much more pressure on education. This needs to be in the curriculum from a young, young age. In fact, I would say maybe even five years before safe sex talks. It needs to happen young and it's more than cyberbullying. It's much further than that now. So we have one, two, three, four, I'm putting pressure on parents. Parenting is so key, just like every other risky behavior. We need to make sure that you're putting in the work. And here's where I have the most empathy because you know, you're probably working longer than you've ever had to work, more jobs than your parents had to work, and you're coming home, you're tired, and sometimes it's just easier to give the kid the iPad. 
But sometimes this is where the hard part of parenting comes in, where you need to say, you need to be bored and I'm gonna deal with the consequences. I need to teach you resilience. It will pay off in the long term. One, two, three, four. Number five, the self. There is a bit of self accountability here, just like every other risky behavior. At some point, we cannot rely on these other institutions to help us get over our addiction, to help us be well. We need to work on our own self-awareness, our own self-confidence, our own resilience, so that we can manage ourselves in life. Just a broad level, but I hope it at least gets. All right, so that video is just one of many videos that I've watched of hers. I just found it interesting because it also talks about the topic of holding the um, social media companies accountable for the damages that, are, that they've done to Americans, not even Americans, people all around the world using social media. Um, and I just, I really liked it. I thought it was very interesting. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought it was very interesting and I thought it related to my topic really well, highlighting um, all the negative things, people holding accountable for other people, all that stuff. Um, I honestly didn't find anything interesting because I already knew most of the facts not not like the exact facts not like 40% or whatever um, but I knew the facts about social media like the dangers that it has the impact that it has on people's lives like suicide anxiety depression all of that stuff um, because I personally suffer from FOMO fear of missing out I uh, wrote about that in my paper and I learned about that in my other communications class and just always needing to look at my phone. I do fall to that in that category and it sucks and I wish I could get out of it. I'm not sure how I can and I hope I can soon, but I didn't, I mean, the whole, both of them were very interesting to watch. I just didn't find anything very interesting or new or surprising because it's all facts, you know? I mean, I already knew all of them, so. Yeah, thank you for watching.